Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Silent Core and welcome back to another Red Dead video. Today I'm going to be going over 10 things that you guys must know about the bounty wagon in Red Dead Online. So I'll be going over everything that you need to know about this vehicle, the good, the bad and ultimately if you should buy this thing or avoid it. So the bounty wagon does come with a bit of a price tag of $875 and 2 roll tokens. If you want to pay in gold bars, it will cost you 35 gold bars, basically $25 per gold bar. There is also a rank requirement on the bounty wagon. You will need rank 10 in the bounty hunter role to unlock the ability to purchase this thing. If you do need help getting to rank 10, check out my video showing 10 tips and tricks to rank up the bounty hunter role and you'll get there in no time. So let's get right into that first fact. First of all, we're going to take a look at the stats on the bounty wagon. As you can see, the max speed is average, the acceleration is good, and the steering is average. Now, believe it or not, these stats, although not too impressive, they actually make the Bounty Wagon the fastest ownable vehicle in the game right now, but there's really not too much competition since the Hunting Wagon is painfully slow and has reduced acceleration and steering compared to the Bounty Wagon. The next fact you guys need to know is that you cannot have the Bounty Wagon and your horse called at the same time. This was probably the biggest disappointment for me since having to choose between the bounty wagon or your horse is sometimes quite a hard decision. And this isn't a limitation exclusive to the bounty wagon. This actually goes for all ownable vehicles and wagons. You're gonna have to first of all dismiss your horse before you're allowed to spawn an owned vehicle. If you didn't know how to do this already, you basically go up to your horse, interact with it and choose flee. And then to spawn the bounty wagon, you have to hit left on the D-pad, go to stables, vehicles, own vehicles, and from here you can choose to spawn your wagon to your current location. Basically, it's like requesting a vehicle in Grand Theft Auto 5 online and having your mechanic come right to you. To be warned though, when you spawn a vehicle, it's not going to appear right next to you, unfortunately. It tends to spawn a little bit away or sometimes a street over from where you actually call it. And you also can't whistle on that vehicle to have the horse bring it closer to you so you're gonna have to usually run a little bit and collect it yourself. The next thing you need to know is that you cannot change weapons while using the bounty wagon. Again this is another feature or limitation that isn't exclusive to the bounty wagon. It goes for all owned vehicles currently in the game. You're not going to be able to access your stored weapons that are normally stored on your horse. This probably wouldn't be a problem if we were allowed to also spawn our horse, but the fact that we have to choose between having a vehicle or a horse, it means that before um, fleeing your horse, you definitely want to make sure you have the loadout you want to stick with, or you want to go for your bounty hunt with, before you flee your horse and call in the bounty wagon, because once you call it in, you're not going to be able to access any of your stored weapons. Next up, bounties cannot escape from the wagon. This is probably the biggest advantage of having the wagon, as even if you've purchased the reinforced lasso, it doesn't actually prevent bounties from escaping your hog tie. The reinforced lasso just kind of increases the time that it takes a bounty to escape your hog tie. But having the bounty wagon means they're actually going to be um, trapped in there and they're never going to be able to escape, meaning you can take your time to loot bodies and you know get the other bounties if there's multiple targets. And that brings me on to my next fact, and that is if you crash in the bounty wagon, all of the targets will be able to run away. So you have to be very careful with the handling when you're driving this vehicle. If possible, try to avoid going over mountains or any areas that are overly rocky, especially if you're going through rough rivers with lots of rocks. And if you have to make a hard turn in the road, you definitely want to slow down a lot and take the corner carefully so you don't wreck this thing. This next tip is something that really helped me with my bounty hunts since the wagon is so slow compared to your horse. And the best way to use the bounty wagon is actually not to call it right when you accept the bounty. What you want to do is use your own personal horse to get to your bounty destination and then you want to call your bounty wagon. So basically when you're doing a bounty you want to first of all accept the bounty poster, call in your horse and ride to the destination and then once you get to your destination you're free to dismiss your horse, call in your bounty wagon and then your bounty wagon will be right next to your bounty camp or hideout or wherever you need to get to. This will be especially handy if your bounty target is located quite far away from where you accepted it, or else it could take you over five minutes to ride there in such a slow wagon. Next up, I'd recommend keeping the wagon at the main entrance to the enemy camp or hideout, 
and that way you don't have to worry about navigating through rough obstacles through bounty camps. You just want to be able to keep your bounty wagon at the entrance and keep it on the road for a quick exit. That means you want to exit on foot and take the bounties back to your bounty wagon rather than taking your bounty wagon to the bounties. Keep in mind if you do dismiss your bounty wagon, there will be a 2 minute cooldown until you're able to call it again. You can however call your horse immediately after dismissing a wagon, so you won't have to wait 2 minutes to do that. When you're hunting bounties using the bounty wagon, you also need to strategize your bounty targets. If you ride right up there and spook the camp, the bounties can quite often make a runner and you have no chance of catching them when you're on such a slow wagon. So make sure to leave the wagon at a safe spot out of sight, just at the front lines of the camp and scope out where the bounties currently are using your eagle eye and that way you can cut them off before they make a runner and be able to bring them back to the wagon. And that leaves me with the 10th and final tip I have for you guys and that is probably the best part of the bounty wagon and that is that you can complete bounty missions with more than two bounty targets as a solo player. So if you are someone that likes to complete bounties solo, you'll know that you can basically only take one bounty alive on the back of your horse and I guess one more if you drag them with your lasso, but I'm pretty sure if you drag a bounty with your lasso it's going to eventually kill them and you're going to lose some rewards. However, the advantage of having the bounty wagon is that you can capture all of your bounties alive, you're going to get much better rewards from completing your bounty hunts and you can even go for the six bounty missions and be able to store all six bounties inside of your bounty wagon. From what I've seen, the six person bounty posters can be very rewarding. They can give you over a thousand bounty experience, sometimes over a hundred cash and go bar rewards from just completing one bounty. I have noticed the rewards can be very inconsistent though, so I think it does also depend on who the posse leader is and also the distance and time that it took you to hand in your bounties. So now we've gone over the 10 tips and tricks for the bounty wagon, I did want to give you guys a bit of a buyer's beware. I'm now maxed in the trader and also the collector at level 20 in both of those roles, but my bounty role is the only one that I've not maxed and because it's been such a slow skill to level. And there's also been a pretty annoying glitch, I'm sure you guys have experienced it if you're bounty hunters in the game, but it causes you to not get any bounty hunter XP at all when you hand in some bounties. I find this happening to myself mostly when I'm the posse leader and sometimes the game glitches and it'll only give you a gold bar reward but no cash or XP. So hopefully this is an issue Rockstar patches soon but until then it's patched you guys might want to hold off making this purchase so you don't kind of waste your time and money handing in bounties that you're not going to get rewarded for. But putting the glitches aside for now since they obviously will be fixed eventually, should you guys purchase the bounty wagon? In my opinion this was an easy buy. The bounty hunter role is probably one of the slowest to level up out of all the roles that are currently in the game, so the bounty wagon is a tool that you can use to speed things up and progress faster in your bounty hunter role. If you are a player that doesn't really care about the bounty hunter role, you might not want to purchase this vehicle, but if you are someone that does want to max out their roles and get rank 20 in the bounty hunter, this is probably a must own vehicle for you. Another aspect that's worth talking about with the bounty wagon is the fun aspect. It's actually great fun to use in free roam. I did try hog tying another random person and throwing them in the back but it didn't actually work. It doesn't let you throw random players into the back of it. However, you are actually able to catch other players if they have a bounty on their head. That player has to have at least a $20 bounty and you can be assigned to basically catch them instead of always catching NPC bounties. You can go after a real player and claim the bounty on their head. I haven't had this happen to me yet, I guess it's quite rare for players to have a $20 bounty on their head, I feel like most people pay off their bounties quite regularly, but hopefully I can have this for a future video as I think it would be pretty interesting to see what happens when you deliver another player to jail. So that was all of my tips and tricks for the bounty wagon in Red Dead Online. Do let me know down in the comments if you're going to be picking up the bounty wagon and what you think of it so far. If you did enjoy this video I'd really appreciate it if you could take a few seconds to leave it a like and also subscribe if you are new to my channel so you don't miss out on any future Red Dead videos. Have a good one guys and I'll catch you in the next video.